what is going on everybody welcome to the ultimate beginner's guide to Vorkath this has been highly requested and for good reason too Vorkath is a pretty serious boss and I'm gonna be going through and showing you guys every single thing that I can possibly think of whether you're just trying to get through this boss to finish the Dragon Slayer 2 quest or if you're trying to stack up that cash over a good period of time before we get started, if you like seeing content like this, easy bossing guides, other ways to make money throughout old school RuneScape, hit that subscribe button down below and make sure you turn on that little bell icon. The bell icon will let you know whenever I upload new content. Now there are two ways to do Vorkath. One way is with the ranged attack style and one way is the melee attack style. For the purpose of this guide, I am only going to be covering the ranged attack style, and I have a couple of reasons for doing this. One, ranging Vorkath to me is a little bit easier, and two, because the melee attack style actually requires a decent amount of GP in your bank to be successful and to actually be enjoyable. Now the reason I say that is because when you're doing melee Vorkath in just Void, you take a lot of damage and it's just really not fun. It's really boring. With ranging Vorkath with the Blowpipe and a Bandos God Sword, I think it's personally more fun and it's a lot easier to learn. So we're just going to be covering the range style in this video. So like I said earlier, Dragon Slayer 2 does have to be completed for you to kill Vorkath for profit. Now you might be here just to see how to get through Vorkath to finish the quest, but after that, you're probably going to want to come back, check it out again, learn the mechanics and study them. So that is what I aim to do in this video, get you guys through this at least the first time for Dragon Slayer 2 and get you on your way to a ton of loot, about 135,000 GP on average per kill. So as usual, first thing is first, going to check out a little bit of background information about Vorkath. Vorkath has a combat level of 732 and always drops two superior dragon bones and two blue dragon hides. Now that is a guaranteed, give or take a few GP, 20,000 GP per kill. Vorkath has a hit points level of 750 with a max hit of 30 with magic. 35 with ranged, 72 with dragonfire, 121 with the dragonfire bomb or special. So this means if you get hit with this dead on, you cannot outlive it even with over angling at 99 HP and 20 with the breath attacks if you're not using an anti-fire potion. Vorkath is not aggressive. You will actually have to walk up to the dragon, poke it, and then you will start to kill. Vorkath is poisonous and uses venom, and Vorkath has a range of weaknesses. Stab, ranged, dragon bane weapons, and the salve amulet. So the salve amulet is very important here. We'll talk about that in a little bit because Vorkath is considered undead. It's kind of like a zombie dragon. Vorkath attacks with melee, magic, ranged, and dragon fire. As for Vorkath's more specific combat stats, level 560 attack. So Vorkath's melee attacks are pretty accurate. Strength level of 308, defense level of 214, magic level of 150, range level of 308. As for the defensive stats, plus 26 to stab, plus 108 to slash and crush, plus 240 to magic, and plus 26 to range. As for the other bonuses, Vorkath also has a plus 16 to the attack stat. Next up, we're going to talk about how to get to Vorkath in the easiest way and the most efficient way to make your trips quicker. So first thing you're going to want to do is start out at Lunar Isle. Here on Lunar Isle, you can use one bank booth, and this is going to be the far right bank booth. You can use this without getting kicked off of the island. If you do have the Fremenic Elite Diaries done, you won't have to worry about kicking off. We'll use a different method, and I'll talk about that in a second. Now, you're going to want to restock your supplies, gear up, do whatever you have to do on Lunar Isle. Once you are done, talk to either of the other bankers, and they will kick you off the island. Once you have been kicked off the island, they will send you all the way back to Relica, and it will put you just south of the dock you need to board the boat to head over to Vorkath's island. Now here you will run a run straight north from pretty much where they're going to kick you off and talk to Torfin. Torfin will then take you on a boat over to Vorkath's island. You will quickly run north, hop over the rock, and you are ready to start your kills. Now for this video, I have some gear requirements and recommendations as well as some level recommendations. So first thing we are going to start off with is talking about the Dragon Bane weapons. Now if you don't know, the Dragon Bane weapons are the Dragon Hunter crossbow, which is a drop from Raids 1 or Chambers of Zarek, 
And the other weapon is the Dragon Hunter Lance, which is a drop from the Alchemical Hydra. You need the claw, use it with a Zamoraki and Hosta, and you can create the Dragon Hunter Lance. Now, these do a significant amount of damage and accuracy to dragon weapons. And if you have one, that is absolutely perfect because you'll want to be using them at Vorkath. But if you don't, no worries, you can still do it, and I will teach you guys how. Now, as for another recommendation, this is a hard requirement for me. And this is having the Salve Amulet EI, which means it is enchanted and imbued. Now, if you enchant the Salve Amulet EI, it will take the bonus on undead creatures from 15% to 20%, but only with the melee attack style. Once you get it imbued from the Nightmare Zone, it will increase to 20% with magic and range, which we definitely want to have it for Vorkath because it's undead. Now, if you're thinking you can use the Slayer Helmet, yes, you absolutely can on a blue dragon task but the slayer helmet only gives you plus 15 percent so using the salve amulet ei will increase that to 20 percent and we can wear the full void ranger outfit which we will talk about in the gear setup in just a bit as for the level requirements sometimes i usually say you can or can't do it without these requirements but i'm going to go ahead and say these are hard requirements I don't think you should do Vorkath with anything less than what I'm about to say because it's going to make it a lot harder, the kills are going to be slower, and it's just not going to be fun. Now as for starting off, we're going to be using both melee for special attacks and ranging for the duration of the kill. As for the melee stats, I'm going to recommend that you have an attack level of 80, a strength level of 90, and a defense level of 80. Now you will be tanking some hits, so you do want some decent defense, and you're going to be using a Bandos God Sword for special attacks to lower Vorkath's defense, and having level 80 attack and 90 strength will allow you to hit somewhat frequently and somewhat high. You want to take as many of those defense levels away as possible. As for the range level and using the Toxic Blowpipe, I'm going to recommend that you have a minimum range level of 85. And once again, you want to have decent DPS here, and you don't want your kills to take forever. Now, at 85, I suggest you have a decent amount of overhead so you can afford some rune darts. At 85 range, I definitely recommend that you use rune darts to kill Vorkath. You are still going to profit plenty if you're using rune darts. Once you get up into the higher range levels, maybe around 94, 95, you can switch over to adamant and you'll still do a decent amount of DPS. And last but not least, I am going to recommend that you have a prayer level of at least 70. 70 will allow you to use all of the overhead protection prayers, piety for your Bandos God Sword special attacks, and it's going to give you a decent amount of prayer points so you don't run out all the time and don't have to take too many prayer potions and less food in your inventory. Moving into the gear setup, like I said we are going to be using the ranged attack style for the duration of the kill, melee attack style only for the Bandos God Sword special attacks. So as for the gear that I have equipped right now, it is my ranging gear and as you can see I have the full elite void outfit on that is the helm, the torso, the legs, and the gloves. Now if you don't have elite void, it's not necessary, you can use normal void, but I definitely suggest spending some extra time to get the Western Province Hard Diaries done so you can get the Elite Void. As for the rest of this, I'm going to be using an Ava's Assembler, but if you have a Ranging Cape or an Ava's Accumulator, that will work as well. The Salve Amulet EI for that plus 20% to all styles of undead creatures. A Rada's Blessing because it gives plus 2 to the prayer stat. A Toxic Blowpipe, and because I am 99 ranged, I will be using Adamant Darts. Like I said earlier, if you are lower, you might want to switch to Rune. I'm going to be using Bandos Boots for the extra range bonus, and I'm going to be using a Brimstone Ring. And that is because normally you would bring a Berserker's Ring and an Archer's Ring switch for the special attack and switching over to range. But the Brimstone Ring is actually cheaper than those two rings combined. And it gives you some decent stats. So if you can't afford both of them, you can use a Brimstone Ring. If you have both of them, you will want to bring the Ring switch. And they will want to be imbued most definitely. Over in my inventory, the first thing you will see is my four-way melee switch, and this will include the Void Knight melee helmet, a fire cape, a Bandos God Sword, and Dragon Boots. As for my potions, I will be taking a Ranging Potion, a Super Combat Potion, a Super Extended Anti-Fire Potion, an Anti-Venom Plus, and three Prayer Potions. Now let's talk about the potions for just a second. We'll start off with the ranging potion. The ranging potion is obvious because we will be using range after we dump our special attacks with the Bandos God Sword. As for the super combat potion, this will increase our attack and strength so we can actually get off some decent specs. And it will also provide us with some defense levels to stave off some of Orcast's range attacks. 
As for the super extended anti-fire potion, because we are not using an anti-dragon shield, obviously we can't with the blowpipe, we will need a certain amount of protection and this will be protect from magic paired with the super extended anti-fire potion and we will still take some damage from the fire breaths attacks but they will be considerably weaker so they won't affect us that much as for the anti-venom yes vorkath does use venom and the anti-venom plus will provide immunity for three minutes if we do get venom as for the three prayer potions we are aiming to get two kills per trip with the blowpipe so three prayer potions with a prayer level of 70 or higher should be just fine to get two kills per trip as for the remainder of the inventory, in my rune pouch, I have Law Runes, Chaos Runes, and Dust Runes. Now the Dust Runes are providing Air and Earth Runes, and we will need these for the Crumble Undead spell, which I will explain to you in just a minute in the mechanics. And these will also provide us with a teleport to our house. Now normally I would have a construction cape in my inventory to teleport to my house but for the purpose of this guide i'm taking the rune pouch because most of you will need to have that i also have fremenic sea boots in my inventory because i have the fremenic elite diaries done but if you do not you will be using a lunar teleport from your house to get back to lunar isle and obviously you'll replace those boots with one more shark as for the remainder of my inventory it is filled with sharks because we will obviously need some food while we were here you shouldn't have to worry about combo eats because vorkath doesn't put out a super high amount of sustained damage you can easily eat through vorkath's hits if you keep your hp up i suggest keeping your hp above 50 at all times all right so from here we can go ahead and jump into each of vorkath's mechanics there are five that we're going to go over and i'm going to explain exactly what they do and how to avoid or deter them now the first mechanic we are going to talk about is the prayer deactivation effect now this is very simple to avoid what we're going to want to do is make sure that our quick prayers are set mine are currently set to protect from magic preserve and rigor but if you don't have rigor you would be using eagle eye doing this once you see the hit splat your prayers will be turned off you can quickly put them back on by having your quick prayers set Next mechanic is going to be the Venom Breath Attack. Now this is very similar to the Prayer Deactivation Breath Attack. Now with this one, it's going to be colored green, and all it is going to do is going to inflict Venom on you. It doesn't matter whether you're praying or not. Now it's kind of important here. You don't want to waste your Anti-Venom Pluses. They're pretty expensive, so you don't have to use this right away to start the fight. What you can do is just wait until you see one of those green attacks, and then you can use the Anti-Venom Plus. It'll conserve a little bit of money in the long run if you're not just kind of wasting it throughout the kill. All right, so this next mechanic is going to be the Dragon Firebomb, and this is the first mechanic that is pretty serious. So this mechanic, Vorkath is going to kind of cock his head back and shoot a Dragon Firebomb, which is going to arch up and then come down at you at the square that you are standing. Now, it is very important that you move at least two squares away from this attack. Where it hits is going to deal full damage and can hit you for all the way up to 121 damage. And on any of the adjacent squares that you can see marked here, it will hit you for half damage. So it can do somewhere in the area of about 60 damage. So definitely want to get out of the way of this just by moving to any square that is not the one you are standing on when it is fired or any one of those that is adjacent. Next mechanic is going to be the undead spawn. So for this one, Vorkath is going to shoot a white dragon fire breath attack at you. And what this is going to do is it is going to freeze you first. You will not be able to inflict any damage against Vorkath. Now, when you see this white dragon fire bomb coming towards you, you're going to want to click under yourself. Clicking under yourself resets your auto attack timer. So you will be able to flawlessly cast the crumple undead spell on the undead spawn switch to your spell book select the spell but don't click it until the spawn is actually on the ground and moving towards you because if you do it a little bit early you'll end up clicking through the spawn the attack won't go off and it'll run up to you if you panic and miss the second time it'll hit you for somewhere in the area of 50 to 60 damage so just be aware of that wait until it is on the ground and heading towards you to click it Okay, last mechanic we're going to talk about here is going to be the acid pools. Now, at some point during the fight, most likely multiple times when you're using the blowpipe, Vorkath is going to cock his head back and he's going to expel a lot of acid pools all over the ground in the arena. So what you're going to want to do here is as soon as you see these acid pools, you're going to want to start walking. 
Now you need to walk because Vorkath is going to rapid fire some dragon fire attacks at you that will hit the ground where you were standing. Now if you stop walking for even one game tick, which I will show you right here, you will take damage. So you have to continuously walk to not take any damage. At this point during the fight, you can actually turn off your prayers using the quick prayers and then turn them back on once the acid pools disappear. That way you can serve a little bit of prayer throughout this phase. Now, some of you may know of the Wooks walking method where you can actually continuously do damage to Vorkath, but for the purpose of this guide, it is a beginner's guide. I'm trying to help people get through this for the first time or in the early stages of their kills, so I'm not going to be covering the Wooks walking method here. You can find another video for that. There are plenty of good ones out there. All right, so let's go ahead and check out a full kill clip, and I will talk you guys through everything that I'm doing. Alright, so I'm ready to start my Vorkath kill, starting with my melee gear on for that Bando Scott Sword special attack. Gonna check my quick prayers, make sure they're right. Protect from magic, preserve, and rigor. If you don't have rigor, you can use Eagle Eye. So now that I've confirmed those are right, I'm gonna go ahead and start potting up for the kill. Ranging Potion, Super Combat Potion, Extended Super Anti-Fire, and I'm gonna wait on that Anti-Venom until I get Venom so I don't waste any time with it. Protect from Magic, Preserve, and Piety are on to start the kill, so I can probably not hit some Bandos God Sword specs. And there's one zero. And another zero. Okay, this kill's gonna be long. So, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my range gear and start off with ranging. First mechanic right there, prayer deactivation. Quickly click to my quick prayers to get it back up. Next mechanic. Undead spawn, clicked under myself, crumble undead, wait till it hits the ground, then click on it so I can get rid of it, make sure it doesn't get up to me and explode and do a lot of damage. And right after that, a dragon fire bomb, two squares away from that and I'm good. And right after that, a venom attack, so there, I'm gonna go ahead and click my anti-venom plus, and now I'm protected. Another dragon fire bomb, and another dragon fire bomb, and I'm getting slayed right now with these special attacks. And there's the acid pool, so I'm just going to walk this off the whole time. Turn off my quick prayers so I can conserve some prayers so I can hopefully get two kills this trip. And I'm just going to continue walking until the acid pools disappear, and then I'm going to get right back on Vorkath. Quick prayers back up, and I'm back on Vorkath. Hopefully I don't get slammed with special attacks from here on out, but it's not looking good. Another dragon fire bomb, two squares out of the way. That was a Venom Breath attack there, but since I'm already anti-Venom Plus, I'm immune to that, so I don't have to worry about it. Once again, another Crumple Undead spawn. Wait till it lands, click it after it lands, and I'm good to go. Another Prayer Deactivation. Quickly turn them back on using the Quick Prayers. And some more acid pools. Just gonna walk those off just like normal. Now for the acid pools, you generally just wanna find a very long row of straight tiles that don't have any acid pools in them and you can just walk around.
All right, that is it. That is a Vorkath kill. All the mechanics covered. Everything you need to do, everything you need to learn, and everything you need to do to get started on making some bank. But that is going to do it for my ultimate beginner's guide to Vorkath. I sincerely hope that this video can point you in the right direction if you are just trying to get Dragon Slayer 2 done or if you are trying to make tons of money per hour by killing Vorkath. So if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up down below. They really help the video's popularity. And once again, if you haven't done so yet, please tap that subscribe button on your way out. All of your support means a ton to me. I will see you guys on the next video. Take it easy, everybody.